So our today's topic is uh, cost, volume, profit, it's known as CVP analysis. Cost, volume, profit analysis. So I've said that we are discussing cost volume profit analysis, surely. Looks that we are a bit in infection. Cost volume profit analysis. That is what we are going to look at. And uh, in this one, we are going to write that this is the study. This is the study of the relationship of the relationship that exists. This is the study of the relationship that exists between costs, volume, and profits, and profits. It is also known as break-even point analysis. It's also known as break-even point analysis. Now, break-even points, break-even points is the point where total revenue, the point where total revenue is equal to total cost. That is no profit or loss is made. That is what we call break-even point, is the point at which Total revenue is equal to total cost. Therefore, there is no profit or loss that is made. This analysis, this analysis is based on the following assumptions. On the following assumptions. This analysis is based on the following assumptions. One, the relationship, the relationship between costs, volume, profits, and revenue, and revenue is linear. That means they change in a direct proportion. As you do more units, then you have more cost, have more volume. I mean, you have more revenue. And it is expected that you also have more profits, although not a must when it comes to profits. Number two, total costs can be separated into fixed and fixed and variable components. Variable components. So you can be able to say total cost is equal to fixed variable. Number three is that uh, fixed costs fixed costs 
comma variable costs per unit level of technology level of technology and selling price and selling price remain constant and selling price remain constant so these are actually four in one the fixed cost remains constant variable cost per unit remains constant level of technology remains constant selling price remains constant number four is that there are no scarce resources there are no scarce resources that means we are able to maximize everything we require is available another one is demand is equal to supply demand is equal to supply that is no stocks what we produce we sell everything that is the meaning of that what we produce we are able to sell everything of that that's the meaning of that uh the other thing uh, i think those ones are enough those ones are enough now the above assumptions the above assumptions the above assumptions are the weaknesses of the analysis are the weaknesses of the analysis are the weaknesses of the analysis when analyzed from a practical viewpoint practical viewpoint in other words you're saying when you look at these assumptions and you try to get them from a very practical perspective you realize that they are so weak uh, they can't hold they become the weaknesses like when you tell us demand is equal to supply it's not possible there will be instances also where demand is more than supply and where supply is more than demand when you tell us there are no scarce resources that is again not true in business there will always be scarcity uh, when you tell us that all these things will remain constant it's also not true uh, the costs may not always be very easy to separate and then the relationship may not always be linear we have uh, the model for the economists and uh, the model for the uh, for the accountant and I think that one I'll give it as an assignment because of the interest of um, time whereby I would like you to draw break even charts break even charts from an accountant's view an accountant's view point an accountant's view point and an economist's viewpoint economist's viewpoint yeah so you just do a small search you'll be able to see the difference is that the accountant assumes everything is very straight but the economist will talk of the u shapes that you do in economics so kindly uh, for the interest of time uh, make sure you do that just look at the formats of that so that you can proceed with that have you finished writing at that point yes good so uh having said that having said that
Yes, now nah, look at derivation of formulas. The formulas that we use this. Formulas that we use in this. So we say let x represents total units produced and sold. Produced and sold. Total units produced and sold. P represent unit selling price. Selling price by unit. V to represent unit variable cost. Unit variable cost, that's the variable cost per unit. Uh, F, total fixed costs. F to represent total fixed costs. R, which is given as P multiplied by X, is total revenue. Total revenue. CM, which is given as P minus V, is called contribution margin per unit. Contribution margin per unit. Uh, CMR, which is given as CM, you divide by P, it is called contribution margin ratio. Margin ratio, some people call it sales profit ratio. Sales profit ratio, contribution margin ratio. VCR is given as V out of P. It's called variable cost ratio. Variable cost ratio. Variable cost ratio. Uh, pi is profits. Profits. MOS is called margin of safety, margin of safety. And I want to specify this one, phi m, the subscript there, you call it profits made, profits made, profits made, Uh, then pi t is target profit, target profit, target profit. Aha, you are in the you already have MOS, you already have X. So the next one is XBE. Uh, this is break even points in units. Actually, you can make it B, P, X, B, E, P, break even point in units, uh, R, B, E, P is break even point, break even point in shillings. Break even point in shillings. Break even point in shillings. Uh, you can also add another one. XT is target sales units. Target sales units. RT is target sales in shillings. Sales in shillings. So 
feels the shins. Ah. Uh, So those are the initials that we use in uh, dealing with the uh, with CVP formulas. And what I want to do is ask to handle an example. To handle an example. As we develop the formulas. So, Danica, example one. Example one. You see, the company produced and sold 400 units. At a selling price, at a selling price of shillings 50. Variable production costs per unit was shillings 20. While total fixed cost was shillings nine thousand. The target profit, the target profit was shillings seven thousand five hundred. So if you are given a question like that, you are given a question like that. Uh, Same uh, when sales are in units. When sales are expressed in units, when sales have been expressed in units, uh, first of all, we are, when we are talking of uh, sales being expressed in units, it has to do with how different companies uh, explain their sales. For example, when you come to a school like this one and you ask us about our sales, we will tell you in terms of students. When you go to a hospital, they will also tell you in terms of the patients. But when you go to a hotel, they will not tell you in terms of uh, how many guests, but they will tell you in terms of shares. When you go to a matatu driver and you ask him about his sales today, he will not tell you how many passengers he has moved from one point to the other, but he will tell you of how much money he has made. So because of that language, we have those who talk in terms of units and those who talk in terms of shares. So if they are talking in terms of units and the decision to convert to each other, and the profit is the same. Uh, I want us now to have the workings with the initials that we have given earlier. So the first working that we require is contribution margin, which we have said in our derivations, it is P U minus B. P minus B. So the selling price here is 50 
and uh, the variable cost is 20. So give me the answer. 30. 30. Ah, yeah. The next thing that you may be required to make is uh, the revenue. Or maybe revenue may, may not need it here. Let's get the XBE, the break even point in units. The break even point in units, we have not given the formula, but this is how it's computed. F, you divide by contribution margin. F, you divide by contribution margin. So this would be 9,000, you divide by 30. Uh -huh. How many units are those? Uh, yeah. Three hundred. Okay, three hundred units. We have three hundred units. Uh, if you want to know the profits that have been made. The formula for the profits made is given as contribution margin X minus F. Contribution margin, you multiply by X, you minus F. So our contribution margin is 30. Our X is the number of units produced, 400. And our F, we know it is 9,000. <clears throat> so when you work out that, tell me how much that is. Eleven thousand one hundred. Yeah. Eleven thousand one hundred. Uh huh. Three thousand. This is nine thousand. Seven. Huh? Three thousand. Three thousand shares. Three thousand shares. Ah, uh, if you want to know something, we call margin of safety. Margin of safety. Margin of safety is where we are not making losses. It is given as X minus XBEP. Is the total number of units produced minus the break even. So this will be 400 minus 300, and that gives you 100 units. That gives you 100 units. That's called margin of safety. If you want to compute uh, the target sales, how many units must be sold for us to make this profit? This one. It is the target profit by target plus L divided by contribution margin as a formula. By target plus F divided by contribution margin. So we are targeting 7,500 and the fixed cost is 9,000. You divide by the contribution margin of that. So tell me how many units we must sell uh, so that we make these profits. By 50. Yeah, 550 units. 550 units. So that is how it is done, or those are some of the workings you require when sales are expressed in terms of units. Now, I want us to look at when sales are expressed in shillings. If sales have been expressed in shillings, how do we go about it? Sales expressed in uh, shillings. When 
sales are expressed in shillings. When sales are expressed in shillings. So when sales are expressed in shillings, the first thing is to get revenue. Revenue we have said is given as price multiplied by the units. So this will be uh, the selling price is 50 times the units 400. So if you talk of 50 times 400, that gives us 20,000 shares. 20,000 shares. The next thing is to get contribution margin ratio. And this contribution margin ratio is given as contribution you divide by the selling price. Contribution margin, you divide by the selling price. So the contribution margin is 30, which we had computed earlier. You divide by 50. So if you say 30 divided by 50, you are able to get 0.6. Able to get 0 0.6. The next thing that you are able to get is profits made. Now, profit made is given as contribution margin ratio multiplied by the revenue, you minus the fixed cost. You minus the fixed cost. Contribution margin ratio, you minus. Uh, you would provide revenue, you minus the fixed cost. So as a, this one will be 0 0.6, multiplied by our revenue of 20,000, you minus our fixed cost of 9,000. Tell me how much that will be. Three thousand. <laughs> So, how much have you gotten? Three thousand. Three thousand shares. Three thousand shares. I am. The next thing that you need to know is uh, our break-even point is given as F you divide by contribution margin ratio. F you divide by contribution margin ratio. So this will be 9,000. You divide by 0 0.6. How much are you getting? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Good. Uh, if you want to get the margin of safety. In shillings is given as R minus R B E P. The revenue is twenty thousand. 
you minus 15,000. That will give you 5,000 shillings. And if you want to know the revenue target, it is the pi target plus F, you divide by contribution margin ratio. So this one, it is, we are targeting 7,500. And the fixed cost is 9,000. So you divide by contribution margin ratio of 0 0.6. Okay, so I believe you have gotten the answer. Now, I want you to copy example two. Example number two. Uh, which you shall do the same, same things. Uh, the same, same things that we have done in this one. So a company produced and sold 8,000 units at a selling price of 120. Variable costs was 40. Total fixed costs is uh, 720,000. 720,000, the target profit was 320,000. So I'd like you to use that question and do exactly like we have done. Let me change this one to 420 so that when you make the loss, that not confuse you. 420.
Once you finish copying, you let me know. I finished. Okay, good. All right, so that is when uh, we have just one product. Multiple products. Multiple products. You, you come a case of uh, multiple products. When there are more than one products sharing a common fixed cost, sharing a common fixed cost, the concept of weighted average, the concept of weighted average is used. When you have more than one product in the company and you are using the same fixed cost, just like in this class, Na tumika kufunza watu wa morning, inafunza watu wa day, inafunza watu wa evening. So the rent is the same, electricity is the same. Uh, so that becomes multiple. So the concept of uh, weight and average is used. Consequently, consequently, the formulas are as follows. The formulas are as follows. So, units, when sales are in units, maybe we can just in units, we are in units, the profit made is given as uh, WACM X minus F, WACM X minus F, uh, XBEP is given as F, you divide by WACM uh, X targets, if you want to know the X target, it is pi target plus F, you divide by WACM, and MOS still remains as X minus XBEP. So when sales are in units, those are the formulas that we use. Then when in chains, when sales have been expressed in chains, when sales have been expressed in shillings, when sales have been expressed in shillings, uh, profits made is given as uh, WACMR, R minus F, RBEP is given as F. We divide by WACMR. R target is given as pi target plus F. You divide by WACMR. WACMR. And then MOS is given as R minus RBEP. That is how the formulas change. How the formula has changed. Where 
where WACM is given as weight one contribution margin one plus weight two contribution margin two plus all the way up to weight N contribution margin N. Yeah. I hope it is clear. WI is the weight of product R in units. The weight of product I in units. N is the number of products. Number of products. Number of products. Uh, w A C M R is this year. Uh, I don't know whether I needed to specify. Maybe I also needed to specify C M I is the contribution margin. Contribution margin of product I. Contribution margin of product I. I have W A C M R is given as weight one contribution margin ratio one plus weight two contribution margin ratio two plus all the way up to weight n contribution margin ratio n contribution margin ratio n. Uh, hey, w I here is weight of Product I in revenue or in shillings, revenue or in shillings, uh, CMRI is contribution margin ratio, contribution margin ratio of product I, contribution margin ratio of product I. Uh, N again is the number of products. N is the number of products. We finished copying this. Yes. Okay. Right. So now I want us to have an example. I want us to have an example. So the key thing in these ones is just to so example one example one. Right, that a company, a company has a common fixed cost of shillings, common fixed cost of shillings, one hundred fifty thousand. In cash, in producing two products whose details are whose details are uh, 
Uh, we have details here. We have uh, the sale price. The sale price and variable cost per unit. Variable cost per unit. So we have product A. Product A is being sold at 200 shillings. The variable cost is 140. Uh, I think I need to say units produced and sold. Produced and sold. Units that were produced and sold. Uh, we can talk of 300. Then we have product B. Product B. Uh, these are making 3,000 units. Product B, the selling price is uh, 50. It is being sold at 30. And this one is uh, 1,800. The company targets to make a profit of shillings sixty thousand. So, if you want to come here, how do you go about it? Uh -huh. Again, just like we did with the other one, when sales are expressed in units. When sales are expressed in units, what do we do? Sales are expressed in units. The first thing is to get the contribution margin of product A. Contribution margin of product A, because you already know the formula, is the selling price of 200, you minus the variable cost of uh, 140, that gives you 60. Contribution margin of A is 60. Uh, contribution margin of product B, contribution margin of product B, you take, uh, 50 minus 30, that gives us 20. That gives us 20. The next thing that you need to get is uh, X. That is the total number of units. So it is the X will be the units of A, but the units of B. So this is 3,000 plus 1,800. So this must be 4,800 units. That is how we get them.
So when you want to get the weight and average contribution margin, you want to get the weight and average contribution margin. If I say that it is the weight of A, contribution margin of A, plus the weight of B, contribution margin of B. Contribution margin of B. Sasa, the weight, to me say it is in terms of units. So A equals 3,000. So it is 3,000 out of 4,800. You multiply that by the contribution margin of A, which is 60. Plus, money we have for space, 3,000 out of 4,800 times 60, plus, uh, 1800 out of 4800 times 20 times 20 Give me the answer. What? Hmm? Getting forty five. Forty five. So if it is forty five. Uh, the first thing is to get the profits made. So profits made, we already have given the formula that it is WACM X minus F. So WACM we know is 45. X we know is 4,800. And uh, the fixed cost is 150,000. Tell me the profits made. Forty five times forty eight hundred minus one fifty thousand. I'm getting sixty six thousand. Can you confirm? Yes. Okay. So because this one has uh, come so close to the one we targeted, the group gap away 160. There's a one upper. So that the target profit was 160,000. Because I'm just dividing the question. 160,000. 
Uh, the next thing that you need to be able to get is the break even point x break even point now this one is given as f you divide by w a c m so our f is uh, 150000 and w a c m is 45 so tell me how many units are those Three thousand thirty three thirty three point three 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 thousand three hundred thirty three point three. So this one you round it up to three thousand three thirty four. You don't round units down, you round them up. So that this point three will be the fourth unit. I have. The next thing is to get the margin of safety. Margin of safety to the same, it is X minus X B E P. So our X is uh, 4,800. This is 3334. So 4,800 minus 3334 is 1466 units. And now, the next one is uh, the X target. The same as this one, you get the profit that is target. You add the fixed cost, you divide by WECM. Divide by WECM. So here, we are targeting a profit of uh, 160,000. And our fixed cost is uh, 150,000. You divide by 45. Divide by 45. How many units are those? Sixty-eight. It's eight hundred and eighty-nine. Yeah, those are the units. Six thousand eight hundred and eighty-nine. So let's now look at uh, how do you go about it if these units are in uh, shares or if these sales are in shares. What are the formulas if we are in shares? If we are in shares. If we are in shares. If we are in shares. So if we are in shillings, the first thing is to get contribution margin ratio for product A. Contribution margin ratio for product A, it is 60, you divide by 200. You already know the formula. So if you say 60 divide by 200, the selling price, you get 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Then contribution margin ratio for B, it is 20, you divide by 50. The contribution margin divided by the selling price, you get 0 0.4.
Ah, yeah. The next thing is to get a revenue of A. Actually, we can just say revenue. The revenue will be the revenue of A plus the revenue of B. The revenue of A plus the revenue of B. So this becomes uh, 200 times 3,000 plus 50 times 1,800. So 200 times 3,000 plus 50 times 1,800. I'm getting 690,000. But maybe we needed to know this is how much. Eh? Uh, this is 600,000. And this is uh, 90,000. I needed to know that so that we are able to get the weights. So therefore, my WACMR WACMR, my WACMR will be the weight of A, contribution margin ratio of A, plus the weight of B, contribution margin ratio of B. And the weight of A is 600,000 in a total of 690. And the ratio is 0.3 here. Plus 90,000, you divide by 690. Multiplied by 0 0.4. So you give me that ratio. Check whether you get 0 Are you getting that? Okay, yeah, so the profits profit. made. Profits made are given as a WACMR. You multiply by revenue, you minus the fixed cost. That is the formula for the profits made. So, uh, our 313 times the revenue of 690,000, you minus the fixed cost of 150,000. 150,000. So 0.313 times 690, 1, 2, 3, minus 150,000. Is sixty five nine seventy. This profit was supposed to be the same like here to be for a unit eh? sixty six thousand, but in a difference, a difference here that box is because of these roundings that you have done here. The roundings, those are the ones that are responsible for that, but otherwise, the profit is supposed to be the same.
Ah, yeah. The next thing is to get the X, not X, R break even point. R break even point. So R break even point is given as F, we divide by W A C M R. F we divide by W A C M R. So our F is one fifty thousand. You divide by zero point three one three. So one fifty thousand. You divide by point three one three. You get four seventy nine two that three. Four seventy nine two that three. 479 to uh, If you are looking for margin of safety, it is given as R minus R break even point, which is uh, 690 minus 479 to three. Two ten. Uh, seven sixty seven. Two ten seven sixty seven. Ah, oh, yeah. The next thing is uh, revenue target. So the revenue target is uh, profit target plus F, you divide by W E C M R. Divide by W E C M R. So this one, we were targeting a profit of 160,000. You add the fixed cost of uh, 150. You divide by 0 0.313. So 160,000 plus 150,000 divide by 0.313. Is nine ninety four fifteen. Point three three five five.
So I would like you to copy this other question, which you shall use as the example two. Once you finish copying, you let me know. Then continue. Okay. <clears throat> But uh, I want us now to look at the question of August 2022, question 3. Question of August twenty twenty two, question three. Now we are told discuss six benefits that would accrue to a firm that uses break even charts in making managerial decisions. So once again, I will uh, refer you to your chart that I had suggested you draw and you look at the benefits. But the benefits are just the things that you find in that break-even chart. We are able to know the total revenue, the total cost, where we are break-even points, how many units we require to make, how much profits. Those are the benefits. But I would want you to get them for your assignment. Part B, Nasema, NIE Social Academy conducts an, ent uh, an entrance test for every new student whereby a final selection of 100 students is made. The entrance test consists of four key areas and is spread over four days, one examination per day. Being a community-based institution, each student is charged a fee of shillings 500 for taking up the test. The following data relates to the two months in the previous holiday. So we have the statement of net revenue from the entrance tests. We are given the gross revenues, the evaluations, uh, the question booklets, the hire of hall, uh, 2,000 per day, the honoraria to chief invigilator, supervision charges or supervision of every 100 candidates at the rate of 500 per day, uh, then general administrative expenses and the total cost. So you are told to get the budget net revenue for uh, 4,000 4, students. For 4,000 students. <clears throat> so in making that, in making that, uh, we shall come here and prepare we design it on this side.
we have budget statement of net revenue. Budget statement of net revenue. <clears throat> So we are going to have a column for details. For details. Uh -huh. And then uh, we can have a, a student, a student, and they are talking of how many students? 4,000 students. 4,000 students. So, gross revenue, gross revenue. Now, the gross revenue Uh -huh. We have the gross revenue, gross revenue. Then we will talk of uh, less. Evaluation costs. My space is become my toshay. Evaluation costs. Question booklets. Question booklets. IR of all. IR of all. Just write in full. Honoraria. Honoraria. Supervision, supervision, general, then we will get the net revenue. So that is how the table will be. That is how the table will be. Now, because my space is uh, not enough, I want to run. Are you up to this point? Yes. Good. So we will have the workings down there. So, so down below the table, so, so I think our workings. Then I will be telling you that we will be able to we need the workings. So that is the workings. Workings. So when you see that the costs have been uh, some of them are fixed, others are variable. Eh? You need to know the number of students. Students in uh, April, students in April, it is going to be a hundred thousand. You divide by five hundred. 
because 500 is the fee per student. So 100,000, you divide by 500. That tells you in April, they had 200 students. Uh, students in uh, in uh, May it should be one hundred fifty thousand. You divide by five hundred, and that will give you three hundred students. Okay. Uh, the question book is So book rates, the other one that you need to, uh, not the question book rates, eh? the evaluation. Using high row methods, using high row methods to separate costs, to separate costs, using the high row method to separate costs, if we start with the one of evaluation, you start with the one of evaluation, it is 40,000 is equal to A plus the number of students in uh, April, 200 B. This is in April. And when you get to May, the same as 60,000, C equals to A plus 300B. This is in May. And then you subtract here. You subtract high row method is the one you use to separate costs. You have to know which one is variable and which one is fixed. So this gives us minus 20,000 uh, minus 100B. And therefore, B must be uh, 20,000 divided by 100. So these two cancel, and that gives us 200 per student. These 200 per student. And when you come here, you say 40,000 is equals to A plus 200 times 200. And that tells you that A must be zero. And this is the fixed. That is the fixed. Uh, you come and do the same thing with the booklet because you can see they also have a different cost. So for the booklet, for the booklet, uh, the first month is 20,000. C equals to A plus 200B. The second month is 30,000. A plus 300B. So you subtract. When you subtract, this gives us minus 10,000. C equals to minus 100B. And straight on, B must be 100. So 20,000 is equals to A plus 200 times 100. And therefore, A must be 0. A must be 0.
Ah, yeah. The next one is uh, honoraria. Honoraria, we don't need to work it out. You can see it's the same. It's the same. The next one that we need to work out is provision charges. And we are told of provision of every 100 candidates at the rate of 200 per day. So it's like we had uh, two supervisors. Now we need to know number of supervisors. Number of supervisors. Supervisors. Number of supervisors in April. This is also part of working. In April, we had uh, 200 students. 200 students. And we are told they are supervising, one supervisor is supervising uh, 100. So that means we require two supervisors. And in May, we had 300 students. So if we are supervising per 100, that means we will require uh, three supervisors three supervisors. And therefore, cost per supervisor, cost per supervisor, cost per supervisor, in April, in April, you can see the cost is 4,000. So if you divide by two, the Kumanisha one supervisor, and it work, 2,000. Or whatever number of days because it's not given per day. Uh, actually, uh, even if you were to get per day, this, uh, this one now you divide by four, because there are four days, that gives you 500. Then uh, in May, which is the same thing, in May you have 6,000, you divide by three supervisors, that is also 2,000. So this was in a banana. It was in a banana. So let us go now to our table. Let us go to our table. Because of the space, maybe it has idea to kujaza here. Kukumishoko yetu kwa tu mesema four thousand for the four thousand students. So if it is four thousand students, we kwa tu meanza na gross revenue. So gross revenue kuta se mani four thousand multiplied by kila mtu na lipa five hundred. So 4,000 multiplied by 500, they are making 2 million. Two million. So in a space you are going to the per student, you can work it backwards later. Uh, then your opinion, so we say less the evaluation. So evaluation. I'm only supposed to show the working because you've got me a thicker. Evaluation, you're here. To me, Pata, one student is 200 shillings. So to the same money, 400, uh, 4,000 times 200. 400, no, 4,000 times 200. That is 800,000. 800,000. Then, Ukikuja kwa booklets, eh? booklets, booklets to me part of your, this one, 100 per student, so it is 4,000 times 100, and that is 400,000, 400,000, I am, the next one is, uh, higher of the hall, higher of the hall, now this hall, yeah. 
it is not changing. You can see in April it was uh, 8,000 and uh, May it is also 8,000 for four days. So just put 8,000. I have the whole is 8,000. On Aurelia to Chief in Vegeta, it is also not changing. It is 6,000. 6,000. Uh, supervision, that one will change because we have 4,000 students now. You divide by 100. You have to do a how many supervisor that goes. 4,000, you divide by 100. Now, to me, on our average provider, and it will be. So, you multiply by 2000. So, that will be 40 supervisors times 2000. So, the 8000. So, the supervisors will be paid 8000. I have the general expenses, those ones remain 6000. And with that now, you can uh, get your net revenue. You can get your net revenue by saying 2 million minus uh, 800,000 minus 400,000 minus 8,000 minus 6,000 Minus eight thousand minus six, and I'm getting a flat seven hundred thousand. You getting the same? Yes. Good. So that is the statement. I have break even number of candidates. If you are told to get the break even number of candidates, the break even number of candidates, the break even number of candidates, that is the candidates now are units. So that me a formula to the same upper XBEP, the break even point. It is uh, the fixed cost you divide by contribution margin. The fixed cost you divide by contribution margin. So what are the fixed costs? Fixed cost, this one, this one is not changing. Per student, which is 6,000. This is also not changing per student, 8,000. This is also not in terms of students. And even this one is also not in terms of students. Those are the costs that are not in terms of students. So this is the uh, 100,000. Those are the ones that are not changing in terms of students. Uh, the price that every student is paying to the Juani the 500 your year. Then the variable cost per student for the 200. And after the 100. So that is 300. That is 300. So the contribution margin should be 500 minus 300, which is 200. And therefore, the break even in terms of students will be uh, 100,000. You divide by 200. And that gives us 500 students. That gives us 500 students.
Uh, the number of candidates to be enrolled if the net income desired is 200,000 in the following month. So if you want to get 200,000, <clears> if you want to get 200,000, uh, now this is not really like the target profit, not like the target profit, because you can see there are several items that are changing. So we do not know the number of students. Uh, like we had here, 4,000. So what you are going to say is this. If we let X to be the number of students, let X to be the number of students. Number of students. Then, Then we are saying this, 500x, that is the revenue here, minus 200x, that is this cost, minus this one, 100x, minus 8,000, minus 6,000, minus x out of 100 times 2,000. This one. Minus 6,000 is equal to 200,000. So it's the same thing. It's only that now, Peter Mahari, in a 4,000, to make x. Kira mahari kuna 4,000 to make x. So we start solving. So if this one I cancel here, I'm going to be left with the 500x minus 200x minus 100x minus 20x. Those are the x's. I can leave them on one side. Then I say equals to 200,000. The ones that do not have x, we take them to the other side. So this one, plus 8,000, plus 6,000, this one, and plus 6,000. So if you do your maths, you know, 500 minus 200 minus 100 minus 20 is 180x. Should be equal to 220. Therefore, x is uh, So that is what we can uh, say for now. On your own, I would like you to attempt these two questions. November 2016, question two, then C, and November 2018, question two, that is also September 2015, Question 5e. So you can attempt those ones. Uh, they are based on the same, same concept. So we are through with CVP. When we meet next, that should now be Good Friday. God willing, we do some other things. 
We together are our points? Yes. Good. 